I didn't expect to wake up yesterday to the news that the senator from the 22nd district had overnight accused me by name of grooming and sexualizing children in an email fundraising for herself. So I sat on it for a while wondering why me? And then I realized, because I am the biggest threat to your hollow, hateful scheme. Because you can't claim that you are targeting marginalized kids in the name of, quote, parental rights if another parent is standing up to say no. That was Michigan State Senator Mallory McMorrow. And uh, it is rare to see a Democrat effectively fight back against Republican smears. But that is exactly what McMorrow did in that uh, speech. And uh, I love to see it. So it was a response to a Republican state senator by the name of Lana Thies. And uh, Lana Thies in a campaign email accused her uh, of being a groomer. And she actually fought back and the speech was so good, particularly for a reason that agrees with something I've been saying over and over again on the show. We're gonna get to that in a minute, you don't wanna miss it. But since uh, McMorrow was being uh, smeared as something that she clearly is not, she thought maybe this is a good opportunity to let you get to know me, let's watch. You say that I'm one of them. You say she's a groomer, she supports pedophilia. She wants children to believe that they were responsible for slavery and to feel bad about themselves because they're white. Well, here's a little bit of background about who I really am. Growing up, my family was very active in our church. I sang in the choir. My mom taught CCD. One day, our priest called a meeting with my mom and told her that she was not living up to the church's expectations and that she was disappointing. My mom asked why. Among other reasons, she was told it was because she was divorced and because the priest didn't see her at mass every Sunday. So where was my mom on Sundays? She was at the soup kitchen with me. My mom taught me at a very young age that Christianity and faith was about being part of a community, about recognizing our privilege and blessings and doing what we can to be of service to others, especially people who are marginalized, targeted, and who had less, often unfairly. I learned that service was far more important than performative nonsense like being seen in the same pew every Sunday or writing Christian in your Twitter bio and using that as a shield to target and marginalize all already marginalized people. I already love this speech, Uh, so far so good. But we haven't even gotten to the best part yet. Before we do though, John, I wanted to give you an opportunity yeah, to jump uh, in. The main, I like a lot about that. The main thing that I like about it, I, I suspect will be in that last clip. Um, but no, I like the vigorous defense. Um, there's been like the, 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 the gap in passion between the side that has tried to make all of American politics uh, about the LGBTQ community, let's have sort of like, just as an open question, should they be allowed to exist? That's what Republican politics is. And uh, people are fired up against that, regular people. You know, you go on social media and everything, people hate this, they despise it. And Democratic politicians, you know, if you ask them a question at a press conference, sure, they might say the right thing, but what are they doing? Like, where is the urgency? We're talking about people's rights being stripped away. We're talking about tens of millions of people being pushed back into the closet. And for the most part, the Democratic response is pretty much what it is on virtually everything, non-existent. And so it's no surprise that she went viral. She, in that one video, provided a more vigorous defense of all these people than virtually every powerful leadership Democrat in the country. 100%, all we've seen from Democrats in response to the grooming smears is either silence or super weak um, you know, responses kind of like minimizing what they're saying. But like you guys, they are succeeding. I mean, legislation is being passed. You literally have, I noticed this online yesterday and look, Twitter is not indicative of how an entire political group actually thinks. But the individuals on the left who seem to think that like, Libs of TikTok didn't do anything wrong. And this was doxing by Taylor Lorenz and all libs of TikTok was doing. Who thinks that? No, you see it, like you shouldn't dox because all they were doing was reposting what other people would, you know. It's not doxing. By the way, that is not true. There was specific framing meant to 
make these members of the LGBTQ community look like they're predators, yeah, to make lies. it look like they're groomers. And, and then now that, that's all this is. The Republican tactic now, because they can't win based on policy ideas, because they have none, okay? Is let's just smear everyone who serves as an opponent as a groomer, as a child predator, even though they have child predators within their ranks that they provide cover for over and over again. I haven't seen a damn Democrat in Congress bring that up. Hey, Matt Gates, where's that 17 year old that you allegedly paid for to travel across state lines and have sex with you? Is the DOJ still investigating that? Huh? I want to know more about that. Yeah. Um, Jim Jordan, uh, all these accusations from uh, wrestlers indicating that you provided cover for uh, a, ch a predator within the school, within the college. Well, what happened with that? How come they don't bring these things they up? Don't, they don't care about Trump's They're connections to Epstein and all that, the things he said. Yeah. That would be like done, any Democratic politician. I'm not saying you have to turn on Trump, but you could at least grapple with that intellectually at a time when your entire political philosophy is founded on supposed panic about pedophilia. I can't stand weakness and all we've seen from Democrats over and over again in the face of the worst attacks. Yeah. Toward disenfranchised people has been weakness, and I love to see uh, finally, although it's you know a state lawmaker rather than someone in the federal government fighting back. Now, with that said, I want to go to the best part of her speech, and it's this: People who are different are not the reason that our roads are in bad shape after decades of disinvestment, or the, that healthcare costs are too high, or that teachers are leaving the profession. I want every child in this state to feel seen, heard, and supported, not marginalized and targeted because they are not straight, white, and Christian. We cannot let hateful people tell you otherwise to scapegoat and deflect from the fact that they are not doing anything to fix the real issues that impact people's lives. And I know that hate will only win if people like me stand by and let it happen. So I want to be very clear right now, call me whatever you want. I hope you brought in a few dollars. I hope it made you sleep good last night. I know who I am. I know what faith and service means and what it calls for in this moment. We will not let hate win. That was perfect. Yeah. That was perfect. Explain why the Republican Party, whether it's on a state level or the federal level, is hyper focused on these culture wars. Yep. Tell the American people why it's happening. It's because they've got nothing to offer. They might use populist rhetoric. They might pretend like they understand the economic anxieties of Americans. They love those anxieties. They've played into those anxieties. They have passed policies deregulating corporations so workers can be abused. So this rigged economic system can be exacerbated. That is what the Republican Party is. Call them out on it. They don't support unions. They don't support workers. All they they want to do is play off the politics of hate for power. And finally, finally, you have a Democrat saying it. Finally, finally. Agreed. It's it's the most I it's it's relief, honestly, to finally hear someone say it. Yeah. Someone in a position of power say it. McMorrow gets it. And I want to see more Democrats call it out. You don't see it. I mean, not a single Democrat in Congress right now is saying what needs to be said. Yeah. Call them out. They don't care about the ordinary American. All they care about is making this country, which is already unbearable for the vast majority of people, even more unbearable. Look, is your hate gonna keep you warm at night? Mm -hmm. Is discriminating against a transgender athlete gonna keep you warm at night? Is it gonna help you pay your medical bills? Ask those questions.